A worried weaver informs us of a sketchy individual. A man who is known as a viper is refusing to pay the weavers guild for their services. Normally they'd handle a customer like that, but he wields a pair of twin swords, which is enough to intimidate them and instead ask for help from adventurers like us. Upon meeting this man, we learn that he is from Taral. A viper's form of trade is trading goods and services for hunting beasts. The confusion stems from that, as the Weaver's Guild wants Gil in return for their hard work. Gil he does not have. He is lucky that they are in need of his skills. One of their supply caravans was attacked by a multi-headed scalekin that may have escaped from the Colosseum. We are asked to attend this man, who is called Keshkwa, and make sure that he holds up his end of the bargain. And hold up his end of the bargain he does. It also gives us the unique chance to see his viper skills up close and personal. He noticed our intrigue, but before he will teach us his skills, he must first inform us of Tural Vidral. It roughly translates to Tyrants of Tural, and they get their names from their strength. Their obscenely long lifespans has granted them power far beyond what a normal beast should be able to obtain. An example of this would be Valley Garmanda. A beast Gulul Jaja and his companions had to seal in ice because it was too powerful to be slain. Vipers exist to hunt these beasts. If we want to become a viper, then we must hunt a Toral Vidral that has found its way to Eorzea. We accept his condition and in return we are given a job crystal, along with a set of armaments. We may look the part, but now he wants us to test our skills against lesser beasts. We ask around for any hunting grounds and find out that the Spineless Basin is where we need to go. On the way there, Keshqua informs us about the blades the vipers wield. The techniques of a viper exist for the sole purpose of slaying Tural Vidral. His ancestors looked to the viper for inspiration, always twisting and turning to find the perfect angle of attack to take down bigger prey. Twin blades to simulate the fangs of a viper, which are used to strike with precision or combine them into a single weapon, which sways like the body of a snake. Switching between these stances allows a viper to adapt to any and all situation. While the prey we are hunting isn't on the same level of a Toral Vidral, it will give us a good chance to test our skills. We show off our prowess and Keshqua is mighty impressed at our abilities. So much so that he has determined that we are not a liability. Therefore, he'll reveal what specific Toral Vidral he is hunting. It is known as Ik Sox Majun. It is an offshoot of the Brax. It's smart and has a mean streak. It even grew wings besides. Him and his student were tasked with hunting it. Facing it head on was suicide, so instead they ambushed it. It almost worked, but it flew off after delivering a quick blow to his comrade. He held his partner in his arms as he breathed his last. Since then, vengeance is all he could think of. He searched high and low for the beast, nearly giving up, until a merchant mentioned he saw a gigantic beast with wings flying towards Old Da across the salt. He immediately bought a boat right here, but completely underestimated the size of Eorzea. With us on his side, he might have a chance of finding it, if we'll help him of course. We accept his quest to avenge his fallen brother, Yet now what we're lacking is a lead to go on. Asking around town eventually reveals talk about the gigantic red-winged beast with blue eyes has made its way to the Black Shroud. We'd be fools not to chase that lead. The lead bears fruit as the adders are aware of a beast who matches the description of Ik Sox Majun. They have been trying to hunt it before it slays an adventurer or a merchant. Thus, we must meet up with the leader of the hunt, Lieutenant Goliath who is accompanied by a merchant known as Innocent Stork. She wishes to rid this place of the beast and paid good money to hire the best hunting squad money could buy. Together with the hunting squad, we search for signs of the beast only to discover dung and mangled animal carcasses. Keshqua is convinced that it is Ik Sox Majun because it's repeating the same patterns it was in Tural. It isn't killing to eat, but to mark its territory. The elite hunters find us and question what we found. They have come to the same conclusion, that it has made its nest in the north, but they are severely underestimating the Tural Vidral's cunning and foresight. 
Innocent Stork is also paying them based on performance. Therefore, they don't want us interfering in any way if we're not on her payroll. That way, they'll get a bigger payout. Instead, we're ordered to sit at the southern exit and chase the beast if it manages to flee. While waiting on the sidelines, we hear the screams of the hunting party. When we arrive, it is too late. Everyone has been slain except for one, and he is gravely injured. The final member tells us exactly what happened. They had intended to lure the beast out with bait and ambush it. A disagreement broke out, which ended up breaking their formation. During the chaos, Ik Sox Majun used that time to wipe out the entire party. The hunters became the hunted. The beast initially fled to Ral to avoid the vipers, but has now since regained its confidence and then some. It is actively seeking out stronger and stronger prey to test its strength on. Who knows how long it'll be till it grows confident enough to attack a village. The beast must be slain before it can get that far. Innocent Stork will provide us with all her connections, but the slaying of this beast will be left to us two vipers. It isn't long before news has spread that Ixox Majun has attacked once more. Questioning the survivors reveals that it has been seen all over the Black Shroud, giving us no way to pinpoint down its location. But we do discover that the majority of adventurers who survived the encounter were Alamegan. They were carrying around Girabanian wildgrass, a tradition they're used to doing. Apparently, its stench wards off Ixox Majun's wrath. We can use this wild grass to lure the fiend into a corner and battle it. Together with Keshqua, we gather the wild grass and bring it back to the quarry mill. Innocent Stork is here and has brought an alchemist along who will enhance its potency as well as its area of effect. She also has a peculiar request. She wishes to capture the beast alive and study it. A request we obviously deny. The moment she is denied, her demeanor changes. Clearly she is lying about agreeing to our terms, even though she is saying she will forget about capturing it. We cannot trust her. She clearly means to go against us. Even Goliath seems to have something on his mind, but again he also refuses to share anything. According to Goliath, the wild grass only soothes the nerves of the average person, but for an animal with such a powerful sense of smell as Ixox Majun, it puts the beast in a state of relaxation. He also tells us that the beast is being baited to the Dravanian hinterlands. While saying this, his face contorts. Clearly, again he is hiding something, but we won't press him for details. This causes him to pose a question to us. Why are we being so nice to him, even though we know he's hiding something? Keshkwe explains that at the end of the day, regardless of Son's background or position, he was trained to keep people safe from Taral Vidral, and that includes him. This makes him almost confess what he's been keeping hidden, mentioning something about Western Coerthus, but he's interrupted by Innocent Stork. She definitely has something on him, because the moment she arrives, he is stunned into silence. Just as quickly as she came, we are shooed away to the Dravanian hinterlands. We survey the area and find a pouch of wild grass. Ixox Majun will never visit here because of it. That silly fool Innocent Stork is still trying to capture it alive, and we know exactly where she is. Western Coerthus. When we arrive, we find Innocent Stork and Goliath along with Ixox Majun inside of a cage asleep. There is no way she managed to cage this beast, and we learn that she fed her bodyguard to it. Willingly, by the way as he was willing to do anything to get the medicine his plague-riddled family needed to survive. Inside of his pockets were sedatives, which were used to put it to sleep and capture it. The reason why she did all this is because she recently has found that she loves to be the master of powerful and exotic beasts such as this. But that is only the beginning. Her true goal is to unleash her pets upon worthy opponents to enact scenes of glorious carnage. It'll eventually see her as her master if she keeps bringing it new prey for it to face against. In due time, that is. Until then, she unleashes a weaker beast which ambushes us. Keshko is knocked off of his feet and thrown into the snow. She uses this time to get aboard her airship and take Ixox Majun elsewhere. It leaves us alone to fend against this beast. 
we dispatch of it and lend our aid to Keshqua. He is in shock over Goliath's betrayal. He knew that innocent Stork was up to no good, but not that he was dancing to her tune. We know for a fact that he is being manipulated. A good soul such as he would not be massacring his fellows. While it's a shock, it's not worth freezing our butts off in the snow. It's best we return to the quarry mill. While mulling over what happened, Goliath's superiors asked us to speak with him in Gridania. He reveals that it's only a matter of time before Ixox Majun attacks a settlement. They have also received a letter from Goliath stating that he's quitting the Twin Adders. It also contains a hidden message, that the Toral Vidral will attack in southern Thanalan. It may be bait to lure us out and do battle against this beast, but it's bait we're willing to accept. The trail is easy enough to find and we willingly walk into the trap, as no viper worth their salt would ever shy away from danger. Eventually we find Ixox Majun and Innocent Stork. Goliath is on the floor unconscious because she realized that the letter was coded and gave him fitting punishment. No matter, the main act has arrived. We can finally do battle against the Tural Vidral, Ixox Majun. The battle is intense but not as intense as we'd assumed it'd be. His attacks are ferocious, yes, but manageable. Something is clearly wrong. <laughs> that scent in the air. It seems like Innocent Stork is still carrying around some of that wild grass to keep the beast at an arm's length. Therefore, its mind has become muddled, and it's unable to focus all its attention to the battle at hand. It's a fool's bet, and one she loses. Eventually it has enough. It rears up on its hind legs and sends a gust of wind towards Innocent Stork, sending her plummeting into the chasm below. Now it can finally fight for real. Now this, this is the strength we were expecting of one named Tural Vidral, of the one who slew Keshqua's partner. The precision of its moves, a single mistake will cost us our lives. But the two vipers fight in tandem, their twin swords becoming one, until eventually, the beast falls to our fangs. Keshqua recites a prayer the vipers say when their mission is complete. O oh, restless beast, may you find peace in death. As the serpent sheds its skin, relinquish this husk that you may rise again to greet a new dawn. Finally, he has avenged his brother in arms, and he can hold his head up high once more. Our journey is complete, except with one or two loose ends. Goliath comes clean on everything. When he was a child, his merchant parents were slain by wild beasts. That is why he joined the Twin Adder, to protect those weaker than him from meeting the same fate. That is when he met Innocent Stork, who told him she wished to also rid the streets of beasts. He thought that he met a kindred spirit and divulged classified details to her because he thought it was for the greater good. Only he was giving her new beasts to fill in her menagerie. When he found out about this, he confronted her and was going to report it to his superiors until she threatened to unleash her entire collection on Gridania with the worst of her number kept behind to devour his family. Ever since then, he's been used as her pawn. While we can understand his reasonings for working with her, he has done a lot more than slight us. He needs to answer for his crimes to the Twin Adder itself. He arranges a meeting with his superior. After revealing everything, it's likely that his punishment will go beyond expulsion. It will lead to a trial. He is willing to accept any punishment that comes his way. Until Keshqua opens his mouth, and reminds him that what he did was for the betterment of the people. He also played a big role in slaying Ixox Majun. If not for him, it'd still be roaming around as we speak. It isn't his place to speak about the way they dish out their punishment, but he needs help getting Gil, and Goliath could be the person who helps him find clients in need of his viper skills. An intriguing solution, the captain states that the punishment is as follows. Goliath, your conduct cannot be easily forgotten. Even so, it must be acknowledged that you played a vital role in the slaying of Ixox Majun. Swear to never again stray from the path of righteousness, and no charges will be brought against you. Moreover, 
I will accept your voluntary resignation as you did previously request. With this arrangement, you may yet pursue your dream of defending the innocent from nature's most deadly threats, in your capacity as Keshqua's assistant. What say you? Goliath is stunned silent by the outcome. He did not expect such a thing, but he is immensely grateful. Even those words aren't enough to describe how he feels. He will forever bear the shame of his misdeeds for as long as he lives, but he will endeavor to redeem himself through his service to the people. And that ends our story. Innocent Stork got what she deserved. Hopefully the fiends that resided in her menagerie were put down so that they could never harm innocent people ever again. Ixox Majun was slain by the hands of two skilled vipers, finally avenging Keshqua's brother in arms. Goliath's misconduct has been pardoned, but they'll forever be carried with him on his journey. He has now found a new kindred spirit in Keshqua, and Keshqua has found a new partner to work with out on the field. With these two together, the streets of Eorzea will never be safer. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If you're interested in more videos like this, then consider subscribing, as I'll be posting more. Anyways, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye. May you ever walk in the light of the crystal.